Binary Jazz. Visit us on the internet. Got it. Uh, binary Jazz. Us. <laughs> now we need to make that a subdomain. Now we need to do that. You said it, and now it needs to exist. It's all right. We can edit that out in post. <laughs> I think I think we should just make Got It dot uh, Binary Jazz dot US just a page that says Got It. It. it yeah, with a button, and when you click it, it just reloads the page. <laughs> it reloads. <laughs> but we should count how many times people click it. Got you. Yeah, okay. This page has been gotten X times. Yeah. Yep. This page has been gotten. <laughs> but we should make it super complicated on the back end. So instead of hitting some, some rest endpoint, we should proxy it through. No. A Google spreadsheet. No. And we should write to an S3 bucket. No. Um, yep. I don't think React is needed. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna open up a, a project tonight. I'm gonna build a React app that keeps track of how many times people click got it. Great. Nope, not great. <laughs> got it. Got it. You click the great button. <laughs> the great button is a completely different button. What if we like made it like Where's Waldo and it was just like a whole screen full of buttons, but only one said got it? <laughs> it's like an accessibility nightmare. <laughs> one says submit and the rest say go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. While buttons is less than a thousand, display button. Yeah. No, it's got to be more complex than that. We need to know width and height so we know how many. Um, Are they all going oh, to be this? Oh, this might be a very special episode of Binary Jazz. My new glasses were just delivered from Zenny Optical. Like literally got the notification. Um, I should disappear and get those so that I can try them on for you. Do it. Oh, very special. Be right back. <laughs> can tell how prepared we were for this episode. I know. Thank you Maybe. for totally rolling with, with my planned, not planned office extravaganza. <laughs> yes uh no worries my folks went out like on a little outing by themselves so i was like oh, oh i'm actually yeah so here <laughs> exactly excellent uh yeah we are episode one zero one zero 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 oh all right just just clicked over and I had to count the number of, of <laughs> digits after the the one. It's a nice round. <laughs> Very round. binary. Yeah. Yeah. The only way the only place to go up is is that 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 one at the end. We're not. I don't know what what episode are we even at. <laughs> <laughs> what does it even like, mean? This is a, this is a it's one hundred and fifty five. <laughs> Are we really? I don't know. Yes. 155 of these things. Episodes. What is, what, yeah. Favorite. What is wrong with us? You've done over 100 of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we passed 100, you know, 55 episodes ago. <laughs> oh, this is going to be so much fun. For the first time in like a decade, I have uh, prescription sunglasses. Oh, so these aren't replacing your glass glasses. Oh, no. There's okay. three pairs in here. So, oh. yes, some are replacing my glasses. Wow. I can't wait to put these ones on for you all. I, I just want them to be, like, really outdated New Year's Eve glasses. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. That's my first instinct. Oh, those these are, are just... the sunglasses. There's the sunglasses. Yeah. Rocking the Ray-Ban. Um, they're style. polarized, and I can tell when I look at my screen. Can you yeah. see the reflection of you looking at me? um i yeah kind yes. of yeah Ooh. that's weird <laughs> those are nice next pair also for the listener at home gary is trying on different pairs of yeah, glasses right. for us. <laughs> you might want to switch over to youtube <laughs> um when was the last time you got a... new glass new glasses oh um years ago. okay years ago these ones are a wood look can you see that oh that's kind of cool yeah oh they're a little too big though Perhaps. are they i think so what do you think oh i guess they're they're i mean they're bigger than your other ones yeah yeah, yeah. 
Do they have um, a silver like... thing just on one side? No, it's both sides. Oh, okay. it's just, I think lighting it's is the way it's reflected. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One more pair. One more. Oh, they're so cheap. That's the thing. Like you can get them from your optometrist and you get them at Zenny and it's like, oh, look at this. They even threw in a, uh, a free gift. Zenny. Is that Z E N N I? Yeah. Uh, yep. X X E N N I. Yep. They they threw in a uh, a laser pointer that doesn't work. I think it's disappointing. <laughs> it says a lot about quality there. Yeah, this totally doesn't work. Cool. Well, we'll get back to that later. <laughs> get a complete pair of prescription glasses starting at six dollars and ninety five cents. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, See, I know that. That's why I, I bought that, three pairs. Yeah, that's fair. It does depend on what your prescription is, though. <laughs> yeah, so these are like closer to 20 a pair, but still. Oh, these are a little translucent. Oh, there you go. Oh, I yeah. like those ones. You see that? Like it's a little blue on the way through. Nice. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for going down that journey with me. Do they feel different prescription-wise, or do they feel like this, this is my prescription? Uh, no, each pair feels a little different because the capillary mm -hmm. distance is just a little different. Oh, wow on every pair and my eyes are bad so i had to get like the i don't know what it's called but yeah it's a little little off and uh i'll be dizzy this afternoon yeah it's great it's great i always have to get the like my prescriptions bad enough I have to get the ones that are like the double paned glass essentially and so they're like oh we can't fit those in those frames and i'm like <laughs> yeah that's that's what it's like going to the optometrist but if you put your prescription on zenny like they'll be like oh you need to do this different kind of lens and it'll be thinner but also like you can definitely tell when you put them on mm -hmm. they call that do they, they call the, do they do the um <clears throat> did do they do the thing aaron did uh like what's it warby parker a couple yes. years ago and we got them sent and then we just sent them all back um because they're they fit too tight and she's mm -hmm. like it would give her headaches um but anyway um they did that and i think some other site that she did um because she hasn't updated her glasses in forever made her like take essentially like an eye test through the computer is that how do they do that too on and they just they just I had, I had an eye appointment not too long ago and so i got these ones from the doctor's office and they're fine or whatever but they, i mean like there was nothing there was thrilling and they're like overpriced and blah 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 uh, but so i have a current prescription so I, I you can upload that to zenny and several other sites on the internet and because uh, she gets um i think it. i think the reason why um she, we never did the glasses is because my insurance basically covered um you could either do contacts and they'll give you discount mm -hmm. on contacts or you could do glasses <laughs> and and because you know us healthcare system i'm <laughs> um, so uh so we were looking at alternatives and they're like yeah it's gonna be expensive anyway so just screw it um and just got a ton of contacts and that was fine um mm -hmm. but she never got new glasses and her glasses are still the same glasses that she probably got like i don't know 10 years ago or something so um, yeah, so she, has a, she has a contact prescription, but she does not have a glasses prescription. Got it. Yeah. So I don't. I I tried contacts years ago, and they just don't agree with me. And now, so I tried uh, using contacts years ago uh, because that is one possible. Uh, I don't want to say treatment, but way of uh, addressing keratoconus, which I've talked about on the show before, uh, and but they are special contacts um because they're there have to be hard contacts because they have to shape them in a different way yeah. um like they they basically like they take the topography of your eyeball and then they Ooh, build that sounds they, fancy yeah yeah it's cool you, you get it you, you can get a topography done and it literally shows your eye as if it was like you know a mountain range <laughs> so it can it so it knows where the peaks are and there and therefore it knows where the angles and things are so then it, they build the contact uh bespoke to your eye to fill in where the, yeah. the gaps would be if you're wearing contacts so that it's a more an actual fully round surface mm. sounds expensive <laughs> don't you so for that to be seated correctly though you have to 
know the orientation when you put it on, correct? If there's a north and south? In theory, yeah. How do they, how do they enforce that? I mean, I think that your eye kind of makes it. You blink a lot. You blink a lot is what I'm told, and and then I was also uh, told later after I went in for like a follow up and was trying to use these things that I am apparently, what do they say, a slow blinker or like a half blinker <laughs> or possibly both. Um, like I don't blink enough. Don't you? And when I do blink, I don't blink all the way. Apparently. Don't you hate when like medical? And you have like now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like trying to half blink. I'm right. Like, What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you hate when like like medical feedback is something like completely inactionable? Yeah, and, like, and it's, a like, weird it's like it's like observation. Like, exactly. Oh, you have really dense <laughs> nostril hair or whatever. Like, oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess you know right. more than I would because the only nostril hair I'm familiar with is mine. But this is like a uncomfortable observation like yeah just keep that to yourself right you're doing nothing I, to help here medical i have something like that where i i underwent this treatment for uh treatment resistant depression essentially and basically magnets instead of electricity it mm. makes you have seizures and whatever and so in my like out outtake appointment the doctor was just like, I just really wanted to let you know that like you had really great seizures, like just really like, really like medically classic, like one, like, and I was just, he's just like, your brain was just like very, like, he was just like very thrilled with how it went. And I was just like, I was like, that's great. But like, also I don't like anything that happens when you're unconscious, you're just like, just don't tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> Also, don't compliment me on my seizures, please. Like, yeah. can we just like full stop? Like, that's just not a thing that I care about. How about ask me if I'm feeling better? How about that? Right. Yeah, that that would probably be be better. Yeah. But some doctors just are like, I don't know, focused on the the blinks or the. Or yeah, the I, and then so so after hearing that I was a a slow blinker or a half blinker, yeah, um, I tried really hard to solve the the problem of the contacts just not feeling good um by just making a conscious effort to blink like all the way and like i it's but you still don't i still can't then you're like, like developing an, a tick that you didn't even have <laughs> yeah i mean that, it's this is, this is what i'm saying though this is not helpful like they told you that and now you have this like neuroses about it yeah like what yeah, so so basically, my my contacts would dry out. They're really uncomfortable, uh, and they dry out constantly because I just didn't blink enough or best or good enough, and <laughs> and I had to I had to try to reprogram my brain to do to to intentionally do a thing that I don't think about. And yeah, your blink quality has really struck me as being <laughs> subpar. Also, I, there was some way to measure the fact that we're all blinking more as a result in this episode, just because yeah. every time someone says the word blink, I'm like. <laughs> if you're a person watching this episode that wants to train your artificial intelligence and see if we're blinking more than normal, please don't share your results with us. That would fall in the same category as observing someone's blink quality. Yeah. You jerk. <laughs> sure. Also, if you were listening to this episode, uh, it might be perhaps a good one to watch. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. You would yeah. get you would get both Gary's, uh, you know, uh, glasses uh, showcase uh, and uh, the product of all of us talking about blinking so much. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. Um, I I uh, I happen to run you know, downstairs, out to the mailbox and back in the house, just like waved at my family and went to, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to share my, my reason for I have a dashing word. through the snow. I have, a, I have a topic. Um, It might be a very short topic. I have That's a topic because- I think we only have like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a topic because, um, uh i there is a word i heard today that i was not immediately did not immediately know the definition of so since we don't have a topic i have a topic just hey. one show just off. one just yeah just one <laughs> uh the the word the topic today is schlock that's the 
brand that you put on your front door? A schlock? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you purchase a new front door lock, that's the middle tier brand, you know? Yeah. It's not the store brand. It's like the next step up. I know what you're talking about. I know. Everybody does. Yep. They can all visualize the logo in their mind. And it it's says schlock. And they're like, what is it really schlock. called? But like, I've heard it used as like slang. Uh-huh. Trying to think of. It's actually. Yeah. I, is I, it a I, group I, of things? Uh, no. It, that's. Uh, um, I mean, kind of. I don't know. Are you but guessing? not like a gang. Are, are like... we guessing? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> is, that, is that how the show works? I don't know how the show works. I'm never on the other end. <laughs> I think it's it's like a murder of crows or a gang of something. A schlock, a schlock of locks. A Would schlock? it be a schlock of locks or a schlock of keys? Oh, maybe a schlock of keys, yeah. Yeah. want to see the etymology because <laughs> i i did yeah there we go okay so so you're saying it's just a group of things yeah well particularly keys particularly a group of keys <laughs> yeah. but not like on a piano no no yeah like door keys. like the keys that it would open up through your schlock yeah which is yeah. also a definition of how we are behaving door keys <laughs> That was an intense series of words there. Yes. Yeah, a um, bunch of dorkies. Yeah, schlocks. I, they both sound like they're really negative. Well, no, but like I've heard it like. Context. Like what a lot of schlock. I just don't know like what that means. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, that was the context in which I heard it was like, you know, we're putting all of this schlock into this thing. Yeah. Or this is where all that schlock goes. I. I mean, like, it's like garbage <laughs> in the context that I heard it. <laughs> I, yeah, it, I, I think if you said like uh, schlock, like, I think it would be like a bunch of. It's so not stuff in, that you want. <laughs> yeah, I would think if I were like on a, a team call, it would be like a bunch of support tickets related to a feature. Like you got to do all this schlock first before you can build up the feature. Oh, yeah. Like necessary junk. Necessary junk. That's necessary. a really good category of things. Yeah, necessary junk. Mm. Yeah, that's the schlock category, obviously. Yeah. Boy, I hope next time we record, I get to come bursting in here with my new framed images. Oh, I hope so too. Yeah. That would be fun. Although that would take a little longer. Oh, hold on. I just got a message. My, my artwork is framed and I would leave and come back like 20 minutes later. <laughs> well, I will. In the mailbox. So Just take us on the journey. According to Miriam Webster, since, hey, since, 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 since you did basically get it, according to Miriam Webster, uh, mm. schlock is of low quality or value. Oh. Um, but then the question I had was schlock sounds Yiddish. Yeah. Is schlock Yiddish? And um, the answer is yes, it is from uh, Yiddish schlagen, which means, uh, or no, it's, it's, from American Yiddish, schlock, from, which comes from German schlock, with an E at the end, uh, which means dregs, scum, or dross, uh, see slag. Alternative etymology from the Oxford English Dictionary says it's from the Yiddish schlagen, to strike. Uh, and uh, do, 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 do. it has some examples of uh, it being used in a sentence. Ever wonder how these washing machines, toasters, razors, clothes, and 101 other items show up on national TV shows? The answer is Schlockmeisters. <laughs> well, that's an additional... That's a like... totally different word! <laughs> yeah. But that's useful junk. No? It is... It is... Uh, but it's low quality, I yeah, guess. Yeah, low quality, yeah. So you could um, have a washing machine that's schlock, but you could have one yeah. that's not. Yeah. Right. Oh, so you're saying in my example related to the locks for your front door, the crap would actually be crappy literally be locks. the bottom shelf yeah. stuff. Yeah, synonyms uh, for schlock, according to Merriam-Webster, are bad, bargain basement, bum, cheap, cheap jack, cheesy, coarse, common, crappy, 
cut rate El Cheapo, <laughs> El Cheapo, <laughs> execrable, My glasses, gim crack, <laughs> inferior, junky, lousy, Wait, low grade, low rent. I don't know. Did gim you say crack. gim crack? Gim crack. Yep. Well, uh, I think if you continue on with synonyms, you're going to kill several potential episodes here. It's true. Mo many of those words. Well, I mean, gim like. crack. Gim crack just means. Uh, oh, it says a showy object of little user value. Yeah. And there's a, there's also a noun, gim crackery, hmm. which I presumably is someplace where that makes grim, gim crack. Or uh, engaging in of, the act of gim crack. Did you know gim crack is one of many peculiar sounding words that have pervaded our language? Oh, pervaded. Because everybody's going around saying gim crack all day. Uh, yeah. To refer to something ornamental and of little, little value. Others include bobble, trinkle, trinket, not trinkle, knickknack, giga, kiksha, and tchotchke. Well, but tchotchke means it tchotchke comes from yiddish too doesn't it yeah uh bobble is the oldest among the group uh the uh do 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 do, do the earliest available evidence of giga and kiksha is from the 16th century whereas gimcrack and knickknack established themselves in the 17th century yeah Gim and then tchotchke is borrowed from yiddish hmm hmm so there you go. There's two words that mean shit. <laughs> Garbage shit that you don't want. 200 gigabyte database. That is a whole lot of schlock. A lot of gigas. <laughs> I just picture you both trying to integrate this into various meetings today. <laughs> well, I can't I wait mean, for this link to be shared so that I can review some of these words and practice them before my next meeting. I mean, yeah, all, all we need to do is to implement the Giga. You know what's you know what's what would be best is is not not just bringing them into like meetings uh, and and like you know uh, implementation discussions, but actually using. <laughs> actually using these words uh for function names like you know giga factory or like <laughs> class extends factory giga you're like oh <laughs> um i did ship an op objectinator i mean that uh, makes sense class yeah it takes a lot of inputs and returns them as an object so yeah it is right. the objectinator yeah i like to add the suffix uh inator from um sure Phineas and ferb you know, Dr. Doofenshmirtz had lots of innators. So when I'm creating something, I don't know what to call it. I take the noun and add innator on the end, and that's yeah, it. Sure. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Yep. Why would yeah, you? Yeah, to me, else? it does. Um, yeah. Yep. Do you also uh, add to your innator classes a what should do in uh, method? I should. <laughs> or, I should. Or, 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 no, I should, I should correct myself. It's a what you do in. <laughs> yeah. I don't, but I think I should Spelled make D -O 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 -I -N. that. Spelled D-O-O-O-O-O-I-N. <laughs> what I should do is um, there's the magic method in PHP that lets you like set the export, <laughs> like the var dump. And so uh -huh. I should map that as the static type. What you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So then when you, when you, so for like introspection, you can just call the what you're doing and you can understand the shape of the innator. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I need this is a class that doesn't do much, object, therefore it's a platypus. Uh, object in the what class. you doing? <laughs> platypus, he doesn't do much. Dang, I need to rewatch that series. You know, because I'm like eight or whatever. I mean, it's the perfect it, you can always rewatch shows like that and pretend that it is not for your own benefit by putting them on for your kids. So here's one um that uh Maybe you all have seen, but probably not. Um, the show called Bluey. Um, if you've not watched Bluey, I highly recommend it. Australian show, extremely no. wholesome. Um, it's uh, it's too young for your kids, Chris, but you should just watch it anyway. There's a new season coming out, and I have not been this excited about a new season of many shows the, for adults the, or kids in a long time. I mentioned thing... it before, and I mentioned it to my, I asked my brother about it, and he said that they uh, are already aware about Bluey. And I was <laughs> well, like, okay. I am suggesting that you both should watch it. <laughs> yeah. um, the only thing that I uh, think of when you say Bluey is uh, Blue Meanies 
in uh, the Yellow Submarine submarine movie mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. making things go bluey. As there is a line there. I, I Am I the only person? I feel like sometimes that I'm the only person who, who knows that movie yeah. quite well. <laughs> you I think know that's it, fair. You definitely know it better than I do. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hands down. Yeah. We have, uh, we probably need to put it back together, our uh, Yellow Submarine uh, Lego set. Did oh, you, nice. for moving purposes, did you disassemble the entire thing? Uh, Aaron, Aaron, took care it up of it. <laughs> Aaron took care of it <laughs> and, like, and, and put it back in the box. Uh, we have the boxes. So, hmm. um, I don't know if she took the entire thing apart. I don't think she would necessarily have needed to, um, but maybe just components. Yeah. 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 I just think um, in my head, that's a lot funnier. Like what's Gary, what's the movie that you're the expert on out of the four games, of us? which one? Four games. Four games. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what. Would you like to play is. a game? <laughs> the only, I mean, only way to win is not to play. It's like, yeah, that was a formative movie in my teens. It came out before I was a teenager, but that's when I saw it and was like, holy crap. Because it indirectly looks at like, like computer ethics. You know, it's, it's fascinating. Indirectly? It feels like it's less indirect. Maybe it is. It's okay. Pretty, 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 pretty direct. Um, yeah, I, I, there's also Back to the Future, which I feel like mm -hmm. I know an obscene amount about, mm -hmm. partially because, like, more the first two movies and less the third, but partially because, like, for a very, very long time, I used, uh, DeLorean, DeLorean Ipsum as my, you know, text generator mm -hmm. of choice. Um, and in the process of making, like when you're using DeLorean Ipsum, you can't just use DeLorean Ipsum for test content. Like if you need to have images in there, mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously yeah. you need to pick images from Back to the Future. And if you have uh, people that you need to model out, obviously those need to be characters from Back to the Future. And if, and in the process of finding all of that stuff, uh, you frequently accidentally uh, just run across random facts about Back to the Future or like you you go down a, a Back to the Future rabbit hole and like acquire random Back to the Future trivia or Easter eggs about Back to the Future or whatever. So so like I feel like I've acquired a whole lot of like random shit about Back to the Future. Uh, I, I actually recently uh, just exposed my kids to back to the future and back to the future two yeah yeah we watched two but we have not watched thoughts? the third they... um i mean well aaron hadn't seen it either um actually wait so the that, first one yeah um so so it's actually exposing everyone to back to the future the kids didn't stick around for for well my son Gavin basically like will watch things for as long as it takes to shove food into his mouth and then run off to uh, go play on video games on the computer with his friends. Um, so I don't know that it made that much of an impression to him. Um, and uh, I think my daughter was perhaps slightly put off uh, by the fact that um, uh, like there's a lot of like 80s sexism and mm -hmm. shit just just there valid <laughs> yeah Ca casual casual 80s movie sexism yeah we yeah. watched speed um speed. two nights ago yeah we we uh we were up in the capital of the state and we were in this cute little airbnb but our you know like after the kids went to better options were limited and uh, we didn't bring any board games with us. I don't know who's from thinking. Like, well, let's we'll watch TV. And uh, Speed was a movie that was available to watch, and we were like, "All right." Um, How does that movie age? It, it's it's like it's such a a '90s movie. Um, I mean, it was like, oh, here's some like uh, explosions, and here's um, like the explosion like 
I think it was like the beginning of like showing like an explosion scene, like from four different angles over and over and over. So the explosion mm. lasts a long time. Um, it was extremely dramatic, overly dramatic. Uh, it's, it, if it, it was funny, it's very funny. It's not supposed to be a comedy, but it was extremely funny. <laughs> I, 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 I still like my favorite comedy. That's not actually a comedy is, uh, is the nineties possibly made for tv movie starring uh dean kane and wesley snipes uh movie called future sport uh is is the best not comedy <laughs> not comedy comedy <laughs> yeah uh i i when my dad was working for the warehouse uh he would get all sorts of promo shit and he'd pawn off a lot of stuff to me and he pawned off a vhs a vhs cassette of future sport uh, and it was such a big hit that when I got rid of my entire v uh, VHS collection, I had to acquire it on DVD. Like I paid money for this for this movie. Um, it is it is excellent. It's epic. Yeah. I uh... there are there are two best parts. Wait, One best. Does scary need to drop. <laughs> oh. I'm okay right now. I uh, I realized though I'm I mean I'm somewhat of a I'm one of those customers I'm like oh this stupid laser pointer doesn't work and then I found the sticky thing that I peel off the side that says to activate laser pointer unscrew the bottom and remove the insulator yeah so there, there are two best parts of future sport the one best part is Wesley Snipes has a really bad accent uh, a Jamaican accent I think is what he's trying to do I'm not gonna point at you the other the other best part is uh that they there's a popularity index where like oh. people are judged and they have points associated with them and that's sort of like an individual's like personal brand stock um and there's at one point dean kane says something about his pi index it's the other best part his popularity index index <laughs> um well and that movie didn't seem to miss very much did it no, no, it's well, it's totally on, totally on par. Bye. <laughs> and that's how we end the show at Binary Jazz. Scary just just drops. Oh, see you on the internet. <laughs>